Let's make this raw file look awesome in Lightroom, giving it this dark black look. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. First off, we need to apply denoising because this was shot at a rather high ISO and we are going to apply some heavy editing. Go into the details tab, click the denoise checkbox and Lightroom will do all the work for you. All right, that's looking much cleaner. Now, before we start with the cool stuff, we have to get rid of a few distracting objects in this image. This really isn't fun, but we have to do it. So let's click on the remove tool up here. Then we want to click on the remove mode, make sure to use generative AI. And now let's take out a few of these objects. I'm going to start with the branches on the left side. So I'm just going to roughly brush over them. Make sure to include everything of these objects to nicely clean them up. Once you have selected a bunch of objects, let's click on remove and hope Lightroom will not mess this up. That's looking pretty good. It's also very important to do that at the start of the editing. Otherwise, if you remove objects using the generative AI towards the end of the Lightroom editing process, you might end up with strange things being added through this remove tool. Of course, we could clean up a little more precisely here, but I want to keep this video rather short. So let's continue with the basic adjustments. What you can see in this shot, it's super, super hazy. All I need to do in regards of the global exposure adjustments is to simply bring up the dehaze to fix this ugly haze. So let's raise it quite a bit like this. And instantly we get a much, much cleaner image. The dehaze works really, really great on this shot. All right, I also want to increase the texture, just giving this shot a little more sharpness. And I'm going to bring down the vibrance a bit because the colors are a little too strong for my taste for now. Also, you can see the white balance seems to be a bit off. So let's work on that as well. I think I'm going to bring down the temperature here just a notch. I'm going to fix the colors later on, I think, with a bit of masking. But I also want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will also help a bit reducing the saturation of all these color tones. It will also help reduce the contrast, which will give us more control over the contrast. But that's about it for the basic adjustments. We can compare the image to before real quick and you can see a huge transformation already because of the dehaze only. As I said, there's not much going on with the basic adjustments, but there is a lot of masking involved because we want to target very specific areas of the image in very different ways. So let's open up the masking panel and right away, let me start changing the background. All we need to do is to create a new background mask. And when working on shots like this, I highly suggest to activate the show overlay checkbox right here so you can see where the mask is applied on this image. This will help us identify some problematic areas like the mask is overlaying the bird in the center, which we of course don't want. So I'm going to subtract the brush and I'm just going to clean up this mask right here. Now the bird's legs are also included in that background mask. If you want to be really, really precise, we have to zoom in then we're going to go back into the masking menu and we're also going to subtract the brush, just cleaning up the legs right here. We have put a lot of work into this mask. The benefit is we can use it many more times. So we're going to save some time with the other upcoming masks. Before I do anything with the background, I'm going to right click on the mask and let's click on duplicate mask one. So we're having a duplicate right here, which we can use later on. Now back to the background layer right here. What I want to do for the background is make it a lot darker, giving it that dark black look. Therefore, I'm going to drop the exposure and I'm going to bring up the contrast. Again, this will help make the background darker. Let's also bring down the temperature, introducing a very soft blue look to the background. And I'm going to bring down the texture all the way, which will give everything in the back a much softer look. I'm also going to bring down the clarity for that purpose like this. Okay, that's looking really good already. We can continue working on the background with another mask. So I'm grabbing our duplicate mask from before. Let's duplicate it again, just to have another backup. Then go back to the second mask right here. I'm going to subtract a linear gradient from the left side because from the left side, I want to introduce some light coming in later on. That means I'm going to make the right side of this image darker. So let's say something like this. All I need to do now is to bring down the exposure and we will create an even darker right side. All right, that's looking beautiful. Then next up, let me create a radial gradient. 
and this will be our light effect for the left side. I'm going to make it nice and big. Of course you want to rotate it to kind of fit the light's direction coming from the upper left corner. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker and let's place it in a way that it's overlapping the subject like this. All right. Of course we don't want to affect the bird itself. We want the light to be behind the subject. So we can simply say subject and choose select subject. Again, thanks to the overlay, we can see the mask isn't really clean, so we need to further modify it. I'm going to subtract a brush and simply, and simply clean up this mask right here. Okay, then for the light effect, what I want to do is to bring up the blacks. This will help tremendously already, but we can further fine tune it. I'm going to bring up the exposure, making this light really, really bright. So something like this. For a softer effect, what we can do is to bring down the dehaze. So let's do that. I'm going to drop it quite a bit to make this light effect really, really intense like this. And we can also play around a little bit with the white balance temperature, making the light warmer by increasing the temperature or colder by bringing it down. I think I'm going to bring it down a little bit just to add a hint of blue to the light like this. Okay, of course we can also work on the subject. Let's go back to the duplicate mask right here. Again, I'm going to duplicate it. So right click on this mask. This time I'm clicking on duplicate and invert mask because I want to work on the subject. And just like that, we have created the perfect mask for that. For the subject, I wanna bring up the contrast, giving it some more pop. I'm also going to bring up the texture, making it a little richer in detail. And let's bring up the clarity as well. All right. Now I do think those red tones of this bird are a little strange. I wanna target them. So let's use a color range mask right here. And let's click right in those red tones. That's looking like a good selection. I wanna still clean it up because there are things selected in the bottom area. So let's simply subtract a linear gradient with which we can get rid of the selection at the bottom. In here, I'm going to further bring up the contrast. I'm also bringing up the whites just to make this a little bit brighter. This helps really nicely to kind of separate the bird from the background a little better. And thus we're just kind of bringing the focus to the bird's head. I'm also going to bring up the tint just to adjust the colors. I think that looks better. And we can bring up the saturation a bit so the colors do look nicer this way. Another very important thing is the eye. So let's focus on that. For this, we need to zoom in a bit. So first off, let's go a little closer like this. And we want to use a brush. Make sure the brush size is rather small and I'm just going to paint over the eye. Again, the overlay effect will help show us where the mask is applied like that. Now the eye is very, very important, so there are many changes applied to it. I'm going to start by increasing the exposure, making it brighter. I'm going to bring up the highlights all the way. I'm also going to bring up the whites all the way. Again, just to brighten up the eye, giving it kind of a more piercing look. And I can even bring up the texture and the clarity. So like this. The problem with the eye at this point is it has a very wide desaturated color, which I don't like. So to change that, I'm going to bring up the temperature. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation. So let's go with something like this. Beautiful. That should be it. And finally, one more thing I want to do. Let's use another subject mask. With this mask, I want to target the bird's body. So I'm going to click on those dots, choose intersect mask with, and choose a radial gradient. And with this radial gradient, I'm basically covering the bird's lower body like this because I think this area could use a bit more punch. So I'm simply going to bring up the contrast. I'm going to drop the exposure very gently. And let's see, we could add a bit more sharpness by bringing up the texture and the clarity. All right, let's also desaturate this part. The colors are a bit too strong. I want to almost have a black and white image here, but that's about it. So. That's the image after the masking adjustments and let's turn off all the masks so you can see the huge difference the masks make. So this was our image from before to after. Much better.
Now let's do a little bit of color grading and we're going to start in the color mixer for that. I want to work on the hue for a moment. Here I just want to bring down the orange hue, which will make the red tones of the bird just a, more, just a bit more intense. Then let's go over into the saturation tab. I want to bring up the orange tones as well as the red tones themselves and the yellow tones. Nice. At the same time, I'm going to bring down the blue tones to desaturate everything like this. And let's go ahead, open up the luminance panel. Here I'm going to bring up the orange luminance, which will make the red parts of the bird a bit brighter. I'm going to bring up the yellow luminance for the eye. And I can play around with the blue luminance. I think I want to bring it up in a bit because it adds some really nice highlights to this shot. Okay, that's it for the color mixer. Now we have desaturated the shot quite a bit, but I want to bring back a little bit of colors to the shadows. Therefore, I'm going to head into the color grading panel for some split toning. Here, let's click on the shadows and I want the shadows to feel cold. So I'm going to set up the hue. Let's bring it up to right around here, I guess. And let's bring up the saturation, introducing a very subtle blue tone to the background. Beautiful. Then we can go down into the calibration panel and finalize the colors by bringing down the blue primary hue just because I like this effect personally. So let's bring it down like this and let's bring up the saturation. That's it for the colors. Now the only thing I have to do is the sharpening. So let's go into the details panel and I'm going to bring down the radius. I'm going to bring up the details. Then let's hold down the Alt key while applying the masking changes. You can see we can nicely target our subject like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. And we are done. That's it for editing this dark black looking image. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left about the editing, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.